polyamory is derived from two words. Um, the first is poly um, from the Greek root and amore from a Latin root. Um, and obviously those two words together is about many loves. Um, and it's the practice of having multiple romantic relationships in an open, honest way. Every person is a willing um, and uncoerced participant in the arrangement. Um, there, you know, we, we were very much focused on doing things in a transparent, open fashion. Polyamory, def by definition, involves being honest about your relationships and not um, not bullying your partner into, you know, having multiple partners or lying about having partners, um, going behind their back. So if you aren't being honest with your partners about who you're with um, and what you're doing, it's not polyamory, it's just cheating. We typically describe any relationship that involves multiple partners at the same time as a non-monogamous relationship. And that's the umbrella term um, that we use to describe all of these types of relationships. Um, the, the way that we distinguish between relationships that are coercive or unfair or lying or cheating and the ones that aren't is by adding the word ethical. So ethical non-monogamy would be the kind of monogamy that non-monogamy you do where you don't lie to your partners and you, and you stay honest and you don't cheat. Um, and polyamory would fall under the, you know, the, the umbrella of ethical non-monogamy. Well, I certainly do. <laughs> so I think I, I, I can sp say definitively, yes, married couples definitely do have polyamorous relationships. Um, I've, I actually know of several couples in my personal you know, circle of friends that do this. So um, quite a lot of the people that we see coming to our support group are married couples who have you know, gone through a path of, of development in their marriage and sort of discovered that both of them have a, a mutual interest in exploring additional partners in their um, in their network, as it were. And so when we see people joining the polyamorous community, it's actually mostly married people coming in rather than single people. In fact, if, you, if, if, if people do kind of, you know, begin to do things like that, even in a polyamorous relationship, it's going to be a disaster. People are going to get hurt. So we have a lot of very long, you know, talks with our groups about how to ad address these issues, how do you actually start a conversation where you talk to somebody about the idea of opening up your relationship or um, what kind of pitfalls can you avoid by just you know, educating your partner about the concept and letting them read things about the idea before you actually even take the step of introducing another person into a relationship. So preparation before you actually begin to, to add people to the relationship because um, the more of that kind of open dialogue you do beforehand, the fewer problems you run into when that third or fourth relationship sort of comes into being. Um, whereas if, if these things happen, f you know, you, you sort of accidentally stumble into the relationship first, and then afterwards you have to do a whole bunch of repair work to make the thing, you know, more honest and open. It just adds to the, the degree of difficulty and the amount of it, you know, pain and suffering that, that the people are going to have to go through before they can maybe find a way forward. When I talk to people who are very new to polyamory or people who are still sort of vacillating between deciding that they will definitely want to do polyamory and just sort of being curious about the concept, I, I actually like to, to say to them that there's nothing to be lost by exploring the concepts, by reading about it, by, by finding out how we as polyamorous people do this. Because it, the, the skill set that you need to make a successful polyamorous relationship is not very different from what you need to make any relationship work. Um, if anything, polyamorous relationships are a lot more difficult because you have to deal with so many more people who have to be considered and thought about um, so many more different scenarios need to be worked out. So the complexity is actually greater. And so we've had to learn to actually work through those issues very effectively. Otherwise, our relationships wouldn't remain stable. So there's a lot to be learned for any couple from the polyamorous community in terms of open communication, in terms of um, how to resolve conflict. How do you actually recover a relationship that's, that's been through some kind of trauma? So, um, surprisingly, 
many people come to polyamory precisely because they find themselves struggling because they've fallen in love with two people at the same time and they don't want to do the wrong thing. And how do you do the right thing? How do you fix this now? Um, and actually offering them that opportunity to prevent a disaster from happening in their relationship um, is a very big part of what we do in our, in our support group is you know, walking people through the steps of actually repairing a damaged relationship or recovering a relationship that was sort of heading for the rocks because of these challenges.